Hi, my name is Sophia Ortiz, and um, this year in ISM, I'm studying education, specifically elementary school education. So before I start, I just wanted to let you know a little bit about me. I'm a senior this year, and I'm actually a second year ISM student. Last year, I was studying pediatric nursing, and I decided not to continue that this year just because one of the things I, first, it was extremely difficult to find a mentor just because there's so many rules and regulations that go with being like doing a mentorship in a hospital but also because when I was interviewing people the way they talked about their jobs like they all loved it but then they talked about death like it was just a normal thing like they're like oh yeah you're gonna have people die and that just kind of I felt like I didn't want death to become a normal part of my life like a normal part of my day because you're gonna see it all the time if you're working in a hospital especially with kids I didn't want to have to watch a child die so I thought to myself, okay, what's another way that I could still help kids and still be a part of their lives and still make a difference, but not have to see them die so early or so young? And so I thought, okay, I'll just go into education. And so um, I have a younger sister and four older brothers. My little sister is actually the one who inspired me to go into nursing at first, but also education, just because I'm seven years older than her. So she'll come home and she'll ask me for help on her homework and I'll like tutor her and I'll try to help her and we have we actually have like this whiteboard at my house and I'll like stand up there and I'll actually like literally give her like a little lesson and like whatever she's learning and I just find it so exciting and it's so I love that moment we were like sitting there and then it like clicks and they finally understand what you're like trying to explain and it's so awesome because just like I taught them that like they know that because I was standing up there and I found a way to explain it to them to where it would make sense so I just think that being a teacher would be so much fun and my mom last year was like, why don't you do teaching? Because she told me that when I was younger. You know how kids have like imaginary friends? Well, I had like an imaginary classroom. And I would sit there and I would set up all my teddy bears and like lines. And I would stand up the, the front and I would like read to them and like teach them and stuff. So last year when I was doing nursing, she was like, I don't know. I just feel like that's not what you were meant to do. So moms, no. Listen to your moms. <laughs> so yeah, so this year I'm doing education. Um, my quote for this year is, your profession is not what brings home your weekly paycheck. Your profession is what you're put here on earth to do with such passion and intensity that it becomes a spiritual calling. And Vincent Van Gogh said that. And I think that that applies to teaching because I was telling Coach Goff um, earlier that last night while I was um, talking to people about becoming a teacher and stuff, a lot of them brought up the fact that teachers don't get paid as much as they should probably for everything that they do especially when you're just starting out because if you the more you work sometimes the more you get paid and if you're a coach and if you do extra things then you get paid more but a lot of people a lot of people in like the teaching world complain about the pay but the way I see it is if that's what you love to do and that's what you feel like you were put on this earth to do and you feel like that's what you were meant to do then that shouldn't really matter and I think that this quote kind of says that it's like it doesn't matter how much you're making or how much you're getting paid for all of us it should just matter that like you love what you're doing and I think that's what ISM is all about. Um, why ISM? I chose to do ISM again just because I loved everything that we learned last year. I loved how, I don't know, like a lot of my friends still don't know what they want to do with their lives and, all, and like I said last year I was doing nursing and I thought that that's what I wanted to do but if I hadn't been in ISM then I would have gone to college for nursing and I feel like Eventually I would have switched to education, but it just would have wasted that college time. And so I'm really thankful to have ISM and to be able, and if it wasn't for ISM, I wouldn't be able to stand up here talking to you guys. Like last year at the beginning of the year, I'd sit up here and I'd shake and I, and I wouldn't be able to speak. But since I've done it so much and I've just gotten used to it, now I can stand up in any class and talk to people and it doesn't really bother me anymore. And so I think that ISM just is such a great opportunity and it helps you figure out what you want to do and it just teaches you so many things. And I'm so thankful to be able to be in it once more. Okay, so my interviews, I did five interviews. Actually, I did six. But here, I'll explain. Okay. Um, my first interview was with Miss Day, and she's actually my kindergarten teacher. And I thought it'd be cute to go back and interview her. But she's actually um, not a teacher anymore. She's now a math specialist. She's still a teacher, but she doesn't have her own classroom. She pulls kids in that need help with um, math and she helps small groups. So she really, um, she was talking to me about like when I was younger and stuff and it really just inspired me to be back in my elementary school and I just, I kind of fell in love with like the environment and then I kind of, it just kind of clicked that that's what I really wanted to do. And, um, and so since she's not a teacher, she took me into a classroom 
and I talked to Miss Poehler, who I actually interviewed kind of that day, and then I had another big interview with her, so that's why I said six. Um, but she taught me basically that teaching is a huge responsibility, and I mean, if you don't teach the kids what they're supposed to learn, then they're not gonna, especially in elementary school, because that's when we learn like all the basics and everything. So if a kid doesn't learn how to read properly and they move on to the next grade, you kind of like, you have to make sure that you're teaching them everything that they need to know. She also told me to think outside the box because there's so many different personalities and there's so many different kids and so sometimes you have to, you can't teach one kid like a traditional way of teaching or maybe like how I teach Megan something is how I'm going to teach Pran something differently. So you have to think outside the box and just kind of figure out what way is going to be best for that specific student and try to help them succeed as much as possible. My next interview was with Ms. Durst and she actually used to be an FBI agent and Coach Goff um, used to take her teen leadership two students to her class or to her school and to her class and um, I interviewed her and she was so cool I loved her um, she told me that you have to be really outgoing if you want to be a teacher because you have to stand up in class and we've all had those teachers that stand up in class and they speak monotone and you're just sitting there and you're like I can't wait for this to be over because it feels like it goes on forever so if, if you're a kindergarten teacher or any teacher you should be outgoing you should you should make class engaging and you should be able to get everybody involved and make them have an enjoyable time so that they want to learn and they want to go to school and they want to continue to listen. She also told me that it's okay to make mistakes. She, um, she told me that sometimes she'll be standing up there and, some, and one of her students will be like, oh, you did that math equation wrong or oh, you said that wrong. And she's like, you can't get offended by that. You all just have to kind of learn and you have to be able to have the confidence to say, you know what guys, I made a mistake. This is how it's actually done and not get offended or stressed when that stuff happens. Um, she also explained star testing because she is a third grade teacher, so that's when star starts or tax star. Um, and she told me how when you're teaching kindergarten, first and second grade, it's different because you don't, when you're teaching third grade and above, it's more like star based and you're teaching kind of the material that's gonna be on that test so that they can succeed in that test. But then the younger grades, you're just kind of trying to um, get them used to school and learn how to read and write their own name and all that stuff. So that's why I think I want to do either kindergarten first or second, just because it's kind of when they're learning their basics. And yeah. My third interview was with Miss Ludecky, I think is how you pronounce it. Um, she's actually a first grade teacher at Legacy Christian Academy. And I really enjoyed this interview because I was able to see, I've gone to public school my whole life, so it was really interesting to sit in a private school and have a private school teacher explain how things are differently and how things are done. And so I really enjoyed that interview and I really had a lot of fun. Um, a lot of, like the main differences that I noticed within like public and private school teaching is she told me that in public schools, since we do have testing and all that stuff, in private schools they do testing a little bit differently. So in public schools, since we have all that testing, we have a set, um, like teachers are given a certain amount of days where they need to teach a material and then test us on it and then we need to move on. They don't really have time to, or if we, if it's something easy and we understand it, then we still have to use that set amount of days. We can't like just move on. But she said that in private schools, if you're teaching something simple and the kids get in in one day, then you can move on to the next subject. Or if maybe it's something harder and you need more than the allotted time given to you, you can go ahead and do that. And you can stay on that topic and you can teach it until they finally understand it just because they don't have the testing that we do. They also have, I thought this was really cool, they take like mini SATs when they're younger, like even like the first graders are taking like SAT kind of tests. So they're not as difficult as like the actual SAT is, but it's like an SAT format. So by the time that they're seniors or juniors and they are taking their SATs, it's like the easiest thing ever just because they've been doing it since they were like in kindergarten. And so I thought that that was really interesting and I thought that that was really great practice. Um, I also really liked the faith part of it because she told me that since it is a Christian school, um, you incorporate like Christianity and your faith into basically like the lessons and stuff. So I think that teaching in a private school would be something really fun and something I'd look forward to just because you, you can kind of, it's a different way of teaching and you have a little bit more freedom with how you're teaching the class. And again, you can also incorporate your faith and all of those beliefs. My fourth interview was with Miss Nicholas. 
Miss Nicolas, and it was it was really it was a really short interview because she had like squeezed me in in between planning periods. But um, the main thing that I got from this interview was she's actually taught in like Europe and in other states. And I hadn't really thought about how like far a teaching degree could get you. But for example, I speak Spanish, so I could go to Europe and teach English or Spanish to other kids. And so I thought that that was really cool that with a teaching degree that she got here in the US, she could teach in like Italy and she taught in Germany and stuff. So I thought that that was really fun and that that's something that I would really like to look into because it's traveling and you get to be teaching. Um, she also told me that staying organized is really important because the more organized you are, the more, like, they have to write, she had to write her own lesson plans and stuff, so she told me that she kind of writes them weeks in advance so that she has everything organized and she doesn't have to stay after school as long as most teachers do just because she has all of that ready and done with. So she said that staying organized and on task is a really big thing for her. And then my fifth interview was with Miss Polar. Um, again, we'd met previously. I really liked Miss Polar because she graduated, I think it was like three years ago from UNT. And so she's really young and she's still like really excited about teaching and she's really happy. I felt like m a lot of the other teachers that I've taught, that I talked to were kind of like, I don't know, I felt like they weren't as excited as Miss Polar is. And so I really liked her. Um, I also think that it's really great to have like a younger mentor in this field specifically just because she knows kind of all the new tests and um, certifications and things that you need to become a teacher and it's more like fresh on her brain kind of. So I thought that that would be really great to have. Um, she also, she's teaching kindergarten right now but she used to be a fifth grade teacher so that was really interesting for her to be able to talk to me about like the differences between fifth grade and kindergarten. And she told me when if you're teaching kindergarten, the first months are basically just teaching them like how to go to the bathroom by themselves and how. And she said that she gets called mom like all the time. And so she told me that when you're there, like when she was teaching fifth graders, they were so much more um, independent and she didn't have to do all that. So it was really different having to teach like fifth graders and kindergartners. So it was really interesting to learn about that. And then again, she told me that I need to stay organized and on task if I want to be a teacher. Because um, she said, if you do that, you don't have to stay after school or you don't have to take as much work home. You can just kind of get everything done during the school day. And then, yeah, you're free to enjoy the rest of the day. Um, my original work and research, I, when I, the first day that I went into my mentor's classroom, I sat down and I was like talking to all the kids and stuff and then I realized there's 22 kids in that classroom and they're all completely different. They're, you're not going to find one kid that's the same as the other one. In fact, there's also a little boy that has autism in there. So they're all just complete different people. And so I was like, how does a teacher stand up there and teach all of these different like learning levels and like some of them can read faster than others and some of them are having a harder time learning something or some of them learn there's like kinesthetic learners and there's auditory learners. So I was like, what, how, how do you do that? And so my original work is just basically researching all the different types of learning, like I said, like kinesthetic, auditory, um, and then how you can tell what kind of a learner a student is, just so that I can figure out like the most effective way of teaching like a classroom would be, based on like what their personal learning levels and their personal learning abilities are. And I'm also like, there's, yeah, so there's different ways of learning and there's different ways of teaching, so I just wanted to see which one would be like the most effective to see how, again, because as a teacher you want your class to be able to understand everything, you want them to be able to learn everything properly, so I just thought that it would be really interesting to know what the best way to do it would be. Um, my mentorship, again, my mentor is Ms. Polar. And these are just the things that I've been doing in my mentorship, or I've learned, is that all students learn differently, and that's what's taught me, and like the different ways of teaching, that's what led me to my um, original work. And another thing that I think is really big is that your attitude is mirrored when you're in a classroom. So Miss Polar's always really excited and really happy, and when I walk in, I try to be as well, but she's, like, she's told me that sometimes she'll walk in and she's like having a bad day, and the kids kind of like notice that she's having a bad day and they realize that she's not in a very good mood. So they're really like quiet and the classroom is just kind of like down that day. But if she's excited and she's happy and she's ready to like engage with the students, then they'll be happy and excited as well. 
So she told me that as a teacher, you kind of have to try, like, no matter what's going on in your life, you have to put on a happy face and you have to try to be as excited as possible as you can for the kids just because they'll be as excited for learning as well. And so for the future, um, I plan on, for my, final, for my final product, I plan on applying my research and hopefully being able to, I've talked to Ms. Polar about this and she's okayed it, like having a day where I go in in that hour that I'm in my mentorship, kind of trying to teach them something with everything that I've learned and seeing if like the ways of teaching that I learned are the most effective and to see if like, with that one lesson they can all get it down. Um, I also hope to continue to learn about like teaching and about teaching and all that that brings and just enjoy my mentorship and then also hopefully going on to um, getting a teaching degree from UNT. That's it. Thank you for listening.